In, in Core Science, I'm labeling the videos two ways, right? One is going to be a class lecture one, class lecture two. <clears throat> Mr. J, if, if, if you're willing to fiddle and try to figure out how to open one of those windows, that would be great. And maybe I can open this door. Get some air in here. I hate wearing shoes. Um, Okay. okay, one one is called one is called, you know, just just class lecture recap. Thank you. Watch your rack. Uh yeah. Yeah. All right. The other one is called office discussions. Okay, you don't it's up to you whether you want to watch the class recap thing. It's 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 the same, the very same that I'm doing here, obviously. This is this is for other courses, other other classes besides you that would be accessing these videos. So that's why I'm capt capturing them. Um for future reference, if we can keep it Agent J, that would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the quality of that first video was very sketchy. You know, I, it, 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 so I have a different computer now uh, doing this, and my, my, the syncing was off. My lips were one place, the sound was another. So that was basically audio, and uh, it's just as easy for me at this point to make a video as opposed to just make an audio and upload audio. So I just did that. It's really an audio file. Uh, that audio. Now, now it's in sync and it'll be better. But I don't expect you to watch those. That's just recap. If you're here in person, right? The ones I want you to watch are called office discussions. And I'll, I'll, I started with terms. And uh, the next one I'll do will probably discuss the first 10 pages of uh, Think. I have the book. I showed it to you last time. It's in my car. The window was down. It got rained on. And it's nice and bloated. Great. Beautiful copies of it. Yes. Excellent. So anyway, uh, I'll tell you when to start reading that. That's, you, you should have read the first this meditation, though, of Descartes. Uh, and you can just find that online through uh, Meditation 1, Descartes. Spell it with an S. Rene Descartes. And, uh, and uh, now you need to read me Meditation number 2. Yeah, and we're not we're not uh, we're not uh, starting with think yet, but just read and think through meditation number two. Now, um, let me encourage you in this. I am fully aware of your load, but um, I'm, and I, I really am going to keep that in mind. The thing is, uh, how many of you have had some sort of experience similar to what I'm going to tell you? I bought an alarm clock the other the other, a year ago. It broke in a week. I bought another one. It broke in two weeks. I bought a third one. The hands fell off. I bought a fourth one. I'm, I kid you not. It, it fell off the ledge and just shattered. Uh, and, but before it did that, the, the alarm sound stopped working. And I could hear it. But it just, some, somehow there was a disconnect before it fell off the shelf. Alarm, alarm clock number five. I finally told my wife, I'm going to go into that store and I'm going to buy the $20 clock. Because I've already spent like 30 bucks on these. Because I go for like the $6 one, you know. And so I bought the 21. It's working great. It's good. I have a feeling it's going to work great for a while. And the point, what I'm saying is you have to invest for the return. For men, some things you do. Other things, no. But for some things you have to invest to get the return. This is one of those classes where you have to invest time. And what it's going to be is like 30 minutes to 40 minutes to an hour a week where you just sit and think. And this is after your reading. Where you just think about it. Just think. And, and be in a quiet room or, or take a walk. But even a walk is distracting. You've got to find a way to, to, to concentrate inside up here in this box of yours and to follow it out almost to the extent now I, I am not here yet but it would be incredibly I would love to be there uh, and I know people who say they are there uh, it's it's the the Shawshank Redemption thing have you seen that movie Shawshank Redemption the guy gets stuck in solitaire and he makes it through those three days or two days whatever and his friend tells him why did you do and he's like Mozart right because he hears it up here and it was what, what that is is the ability to concentrate to just concentrate and to work it through. There is another example of this. This is a real story. Uh, a POW made it through his time of internment by pretending he was playing his country club golf course, 18 holes every day. He would play it in his mind. And he just said at the beginning, it seemed a, a waste of time. I couldn't really. But um, eventually, I got to the point where I could play every hole and I could focus on every swing. And when he, when he left to war, he was maybe a, a bogey golfer, which would mean he would get like 18 to 20 over. Like for, for a round of 18 holes, not, not very good. When he got back, he was like shooting uh, three over par, four over par. Because he actually practiced up here. He, he didn't even take a swing. He just, check that out. It's called mental practice or mental, uh, there are other athletes that do that. Not to that extent. You know, so there, there might be great examples or prodigies or whatever. But what I'm saying is you got to think about these things, okay? That's the time investment. 
I probably am not going to have a ton of assignments for you to do. Um, I said that knowing that other courses are going to be watching this that might have another course load. But um, uh, for, for, for this particular class, it's going to be more, let's, I got to make sure you do the reading. So I may have some reading checks every now and then and maybe some discussions online. And maybe I think one of the requirements was that I, that I have you do a paper or something. You know, it might be a dialogue where you pick an imaginary friend and you, you create a dialogue like Plato. We'll read Plato next, by the way. For the, those of you that are kind of working ahead or getting busy on this stuff and have some time, Meditation 1, Descartes, you should have already read it. Meditation 2, for the next seven days. And then Plato's Phaedrus, P-H-A-E-D-R-U-S, Plato's Phaedrus. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, and I'm not reveling in this and rejoicing in this and sitting around going, I can't wait to penalize someone. But what I am going to do is I'm going to put a reading check up or some sort of assignment that you need to get done by Monday on course sites, midnight Monday. Just so I know that you're in there. Pardon? Yeah. Or, or something that we've already covered. I won't spring anything new on you, but probably the first meditation. Um, or, no, see, that, that should have already been done. Probably the first and second meditation. Um, and just a part of it is just so that I, I know that you've actually gone in and taken a look at the folder. It's toward the bottom called Intro to Philosophical Analysis. There are a lot of folders in there if you've seen it already. So you enter into core learning sites, core, core learning units, and then you open up on the content button on the side. And I would have shown you on the screen had it been working, but uh, then you go and you look at all those folders. Your folder is uh, Introduction to Philosophical Analysis. Later in the class, there'll be another one called Ethics. But right now, all you have to do is worry about that folder. So, uh, yes, sir, Jay. Uh, when we're in, in that specific folder, how do we distinguish what are the assignments, the current assignments, based on what you might have to do later? Because it, it gets a little confusing. Yes, yes. And I will, what I will do is, get, email list, is it out there? Did I get it? Uh, great. Okay. I will, I will uh, send you announcements to this group. I'll create a group for this class. And you'll get a, uh, a notice saying, this is what I expect you to do for the next week. And that sort of thing. So, um, um, <clears throat> good, good question, because I'm not going to put a specific syllabus on there, but I will be communicating to you through your email that you listed here. Actually, it needs to be the one that you're using in Coresight. So I hope this is the same one that you used in Coresight. Um, yes, it is, Dr. Lego. Yep. Um, all right. Here, I'm going to throw a question out. Let's get to talking. Uh, Descartes' big question is, okay, how do you know that this is not a dream. And, and it, it could be uh, rephrased a couple ways, right? And uh, what the classic phrasing, which um, I can point to at least another author that seriously tried to answer this. Well, two, Plato and then, uh, then St. Thomas More in his Dialogues of Comfort Against Tribulation. It's a, it's a long-standing question. It's a perennial question. Perennial meaning it comes back every year. <laughs> not every year, but it, it's just people can't figure this one out, okay? So, uh, he talked about an evil demon, so that's the concept you need to associate with Rene Descartes. Uh, one of the big things that people, you know, uh, know if they know anything about him is his, his notion of the evil demon. All right. And the evil demon is uh, a power that is intent on fooling you. Okay. So, uh, he can fool you various ways. It's masculine in Descartes, so I'll just follow that. He can fool you in various ways. Um, he is particularly intent on fooling you to damn you. So he's going to trick you about the true nature of existence of who you really are and that sort of thing. Okay, so it is, it is tied up to this, the mechanics of a dream world. If, in other words, when you have a dream, think of one of the most vivid dreams. And by the way, we need a term here. Uh, people have one term that is, is applied here is lucid, lucidity, a lucid dreaming. Um, I, I, I would, it has to do with the vi vivid nature of the dream. And have you had a dream that is so vivid that while you were in the dream, you actually, everything that happened to you in terms of your psychosomatic state, your, your sweating, your heartbeat, your, it, it, it was as if you may as well have been alive, right? I mean, it's just you were grieving so much or you're so overjoyed or you were so worried or frustrated 
that when upon reflection, right after you wake up, because these things after the remove of time tend to die back and, and fade away, but the impression right after you wake up is, that's, that's pretty much how I would feel if I were like that right now. Crying, you wake up crying. I've, I've had um, uh, the presence of evil is a common um, phenomenon for people, and some, they'll wake up and they'll sense this evil, evilness in the room, and it is paralyzing. Have you ever been that way? Have you ever been paralyzed with fear and you and you just you literally can't move for a while, and then you it, you do have goosebumps. And I, so not only that, uh, in our collection of revealed truth, right, the proposition set of propositions we hold to. Uh, uh, you have uh, the Israel's king, Solomon, uh, receiving information from God that God treats as a contract. Right? So, um, you know, the, the famous question, well, what do you want, Solomon? Riches? Wisdom? Where did it happen? In a dream? Was it pegged by God as binding? Absolutely. So, um, as it's related in, in the Old Testament. So, here's the question. How do you know you're not in a dream right now? Now, this question can have a lot of versions. Another version is, how do you know yesterday ever existed? Another version of this question is, how do you know you were born? Because we do have, again, given, given uh, the historical relations of the thing, someone who apparently can live forever. How do you know you're not the second of that genre, of that species? So how do you know you were actually born? Now, now all of those things are the same. It's coming from Descartes. So what do you think? Now, please don't feel like I have a solution to this. If I did, I wouldn't share it with you. Secondly, no one would believe me <laughs> because people have been searching for a solution for this for a long time, and no one has actually come up with a, a, an overall convincing explanation, although it may be personally convicting and convincing to a certain cadre of people, group of people, or to the the utterer himself or herself. So I may be convinced I have the answer, but to get people to actually see it and buy into it. So I'm not even going to necessarily respond, but I am going to just try to help you see what other people have maybe responded or objected. Why do you believe? Uh, let, let's let's try it in a better, ver a more easy uh, to, to deal with version. Why do you believe yesterday existed? What evidence do you have? Memories. memories. Okay, but could not memories be implanted? Could not they be forged? In popular, you know, uh, you have, for example, Total Recall or Inception or something like that. And uh, but what about what about um, just someone now? Now again, look this up if you don't believe me. Someone that hits his head and he wakes up and he has a whole different set of memories. And the sad part of it is he can't recognize his family. Uh, or he they wake up speaking, for example, Swedish. Google that. I forget the guy's name, but uh, if you want to know the source I saw it from, I think it was uh, Smithsonian. Uh, so uh, trauma, head, head injury, trauma, alternations of psych, uh, uh, personality, of mental ability. One guy got hit in the head, and he woke up, and he's a classical p pianist. He just can play the piano. So now we go like, God, time, time. <laughs> but it doesn't work, right? You don't know where to hit and all that sort of thing. Well, how do you know that this is an, this is that yesterday even existed? This is this is essentially Descartes' question. What, what sort of evidence could we get? You broke your leg yesterday, and it's still broken today. But the only thing you have is the present moment of looking at your leg. What you have is a memory of breaking your leg yesterday. Maybe you still have the physical, like, you still have the physical consequences of breaking your leg. Like, no, but you're assuming that you couldn't have always existed with a broken leg. And, and the idea of that is that the way you exist is with two legs that aren't broken. But what if you have always had the broken leg, and you only have memories of having one time had a real leg? Again. Well, <laughs> see, you're 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 still you're assuming that. Uh, for example, why did why why are we born with two two legs? Does anyone know? Why not three? Why did God why did God <laughs> create us with two legs? Because he, it's more efficient than three legs. Probably. Probably run faster with three. Created us in His image. And or three. Symmetry. Three legs. Three arms. Think of what you could do with three arms. Okay, what I'm three saying, three no. What I'm saying is. There are, there's a level of peculiarness and detail that I don't think you can milk out meaning out of everything, which leads me to suggest to you something later in the course. Okay, now the medievals try to do it. So five fingers in your hand, the five truths, the five, the five great truths, the five saints, uh, the five senses, 
And thus the hands became privileged in medieval thinking. Because, of, but, but don't, are, are people, well, I mean, why five? Why four? Why, why not three? Why not six? So the problem with this is that what if our normal way of existing is with a broken leg? And we don't even really have the terminology for it because you've always had that. But, but you've had the memory of having two legs that were not like that. Okay. My question is, if we're dreaming now, what happens when we go to sleep? Well, you have dreams within dreams. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you're actually dreaming about dreaming. Yeah, there you go. Like Inception played on that notion. But, well, what about newspapers? I mean, what if, what if I got, went out and got a newspaper and on it it said uh, September 11th? Okay. September 10th. What? Couldn't you say that it was like just be an ultimate reality. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the the comment was, you know, what if, what if, what if, uh, what? But you have it here, right? Okay. So <clears throat> the trouble is, we have never experienced another state beyond this, other other than the state we call dreaming, right? Which, if we say this is, so we haven't really experienced a more basic sensory experience beyond this one. We tend to think of this as the bottom level of consciousness because we haven't gone beyond it. But we have sort of backtracked into backward removes where we lost something. Like we would lose the sense of permanency. That's why when we commit a crime in our dream and we wake up, we don't worry about real life consequences because there's the, the cause and effect and the permanency of the thing has been removed. And so it's a sort of a shadow of this, right? Even though it's still as vivid. So because we have experienced shadows of this world, we tend to think, and we have never experienced this world as a shadow of something else. We tend to think of this as the most basic, like the bottom level of human existence. But what I'm saying to you is, what if you've never woken up yet? And there's another level under here. See, that's what Descartes is saying. Because he's saying, uh, if someone really wanted to fool me about things um, and had the power to implant memory, to alter senses, to, so you're, you're, you're providing fake sensory data, creating it, either in the mind or actually in this space and letting it flow into Descartes' mind. So you, if you could have the power to create mem that, that fake memories, fake, uh, fake, dr uh, fake uh, sensory data, and also, why not go for it? Because really, accessing that, that newspaper, how do you access it? You access it through your eyes. So it's sensory data that you're using to read September 10. So you're saying, I know yesterday existed because this is a real-life paper right now in the present that says September 10. But Descartes would respond to you, the demon is giving you this fake sensory data. Now, he made a point at the beginning where he says, this may not be practical, how we live practical life. But as a thought experiment, it hits just the nail I want it to hit. So when you go out there, you're sort of trapped in this world, and you can't just say, I suspend judgment on that oncoming car, I'm going to step right into this road. First of all, uh, it would be a questionable if you can even get to the state where you could actually step into the road saying that. The second thing is we tend to revert, and Descartes says this, back to what we have habitually thought to be basically uh, existent. But he still is asking you, how do you know this isn't a dream? So any other ways we could possibly do this? Is it important to know if we're in a dream? Um, for Descartes, it really was. Because um, I don't see how it would be because then there's no permanency. Well, no. The trouble is the trouble is this. No, that's not that's not the case. Uh, it just that would be like a blind person saying, "I don't see why it would be profitable thinking about extension objects because I've never seen extended objects." So they can't be the case. Well, if this is a dream in the same way that a dream that we dream is, if if this is the same thing, then there wouldn't be any permanency to any of our actions. And we would wake up. No, there wouldn't be any permanence to any of the actions that we perceive happening to us in this dream. Yes, in this dream. Yeah. And so it wouldn't matter yeah. if we were evil or good. And what would the okay. point of the demon well, be? Because we're just yeah. waking up. Well, that's that's why the Roman Catholic Church condemned, uh, condemned Descartes rather strongly. And they, they would... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that, that went quick. They would... Uh, they would they, they, uh, you know, I don't know if they excommunicated him, but they uh, they strongly condemned his uh, meditations for that reason. It seemed to do away with ethics, right? Um, but see, De but De but Descartes is in a personal dilemma here because for him, okay, um, the fact that in in this, okay, so for Descartes it would be in this dream. Let's just assume that he's going to say 
Have you not been deceived about things? Like hasn't someone ever lied to you? Or haven't you looked at something and thought of it a certain way and then as you approach closer to it, you realize it wasn't that way? So you yourself have been deceived, right? What then would be your basis for trying to know reality? You would have none. I think that's what you're trying to get at is you, you wouldn't really know. And Descartes then is, is troubled with that because if he's going to do anything in life, this is Descartes. He had determined, and you'll, you'll find this in a discourse on the method. He had determined earlier that he was going to eschew everything he learned. He was going to doubt everything until he could find one solid block. One solid, indubitable, you know, concept in which once he got that, he would start building. He would start building on it. So um, he would, he, if, you, if you told him um, Descartes, you know, I don't see you actually living this in your life. He, he would, he would, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I don't like it, Descartes. But I, he, he would suggest, as far as I can tell with his other readings, like, well, you know, I'm not thinking philosophy right now, or I'm not. He was able to compartmentalize. Um, Wait, if, question. If uh -huh. all the senses are to be doubted, then, then the only way of knowing something would have to be thinking it. So wouldn't the only way to know if you're in a dream or not is to be a pattern of thinking? Because anything you can well, see, yeah, I mean, anything that's, you can well, hold on. Memories are, you're thinking of memories. Right, but what, what uh, Jay is talking about here is uh, the cogito. Have you heard of cogito? This is the next step with Descartes. Oh. Yeah, I think, I think therefore I am. So what Rene events, uh, Rene, what Descartes eventually came down to is this. Uh, there's only one thing I'm sure of. I'm not even sure I have hands. He says, I'm, I, I am sure I'm a thinking being because you know what? I'm thinking even as I'm being deceived. So let's say that the evil demon is successful in tricking me. In order to even trick me, though, he must allow me to have thoughts to, that he can fiddle with and, and fill with bad content. But... In order to fill something with bad content, that thing has to be there first. So I am a thinking being. So uh, his, his extrapolation from that is because I think, therefore I am. Now, people have taken him to task for that, and, and your author will too, and I think with some merit. He should have said, thinking has occurred, therefore a thinking agent exists. So he, he still was very much, very much um, concerned about saving Rene Descartes from an illusion. And saving God from an illusion. That's why in Discourse 3, you never really hear about Meditation 3. Because he goes on and says, now I know God exists because I just don't think I would be deceived. And, and he brings God back into the equation. And it, there's no logical connection to what he did in, in, in De, uh, Meditations 1 and 2. Um, but that's, that's the whole ground of the cogito. So I have to uh, cut off now. Um, we actually, your question there, Jay, helped us jump ahead and, and you know get the, get the cogito down, at least introduce it. Uh, so please, um, let's go on with meditation two then.